Great fucking video for you guys today, as it is actively happening right now. Huffington Post columnist, Trump supporters deserve to die. Okay, so um, let's look here. In a now-deleted Huffington Post article, Chris Calley said that Trump supporters deserve to die more than he does. He premised the article off President Donald Trump's decision to drop a mother of all bombs on Islamic terrorists in Afghanistan and how the world might be on the verge of a major war with North Korea. Cali contemplated whether his parka will be enough for the nuclear winter, or should I buy a new pair of long johns? He argued that if nuclear war comes to the United States, it will not come towards middle America or Trump country, but rather the major liberal metro, uh, metropolises of New York and Los Angeles. Thus, Cali argues that the ones who deserve to get nuked are the ones who voted for President Trump, who he says is responsible for putting the United States on the verge of nuclear war. Trump voters are the people who should be filling the front lines of whatever war Trump wants to start so he and his billionaire buddies can profit off weapons of manufacturing and oil contracts. They are the people who deserve to have their toys annihilated. These people who actually deserve to die in a war that they'll line up to support. Not my ass. I have a lot to live for. They've already decided that they don't. The fact that Huffington Post editors allowed this article to be published in the first place caused plenty of concern among journalists community. Trump supporters deserve to die. Alex Griswold. Serious question, does the Huffington Post have any editorial standards at all? Huffington Post editors deleted the blog post once the Washington Free Beacon exposed it. Lydia Ballgreen. We do, which is why that blog on our platform was deleted almost immediately after it appeared. Griswold did not buy it. Really, because the archive shows it was still up a day later. Hmm, really? So they didn't lead it. HuffPo Blogger says Trump supporters deserve to die more than I do. As the world seems more and more uh, perched on the precipice of a major military conflict and perhaps even the dawn of nuclear winter, we've all heard so much about over the years, I find myself contemplating a few things. Will my down perka be enough for... Yeah, we already got to that part. But in all seriousness, he's noted, the thought of a world in which mentally unstable dictators are hurling nuclear warheads at one another is pretty terrifying, especially if you're a person like me who lives in a major U.S. city. San Francisco not be, might not be at the top of the target list, Cal... Uh, is it just says Cal? I think his name's Cali. Asserted. But I'm betting it's higher up than some of the shit whole town in, Abra in Nebraska. In fact, Cal noted that the majority of states where Trump supporters continue to wear the red MAGA hats, caps, and give a solid thumbs up to the putrid dumpster fire of an administration he's been running so far don't contain a single town where radical Islamic terrorists would even stop to take a shit in a Walmart bathroom, let alone one that a crazed North Korean leader would want to nuke into oblivion. If the bombs start dropping, it'll be like cities like New York, Los Angeles, maybe even Miami. He continued the first Americans to be vaporized or poisoned with radiation in the coming nuclear war will be the ones who tried to stop this crazy train from leaving the station. All those aforementioned cities are filled with people who overwhelmingly voted against giving the seven-year-old man-child who hasn't yet mastered the art of completing, uh, forming complete sentences, the nuclear codes. Okay, now this, this is the setup. Okay, you get it. This article's fucking trash. This guy's a total fucking SJW. He's a piece of shit. This article should get taken down. You're awful for writing this. Trump supporters deserve to die. They're ignorant. They're bump up number. Now, he's writing this to be antagonistic. He's writing this to be an asshole because the dude's an asshole. He has no opinion or anything to write for. He's just shit posting because he's a moron that he, he doesn't have anything to say. And I will confirm this. No, of course not. Oh, uh, wait. The majority of people I know live in New York, Los Angeles, Miami, and San Francisco want to leave the world a better place than they found out. They don't want endless wars to line the pockets of billionaires, and they damn sure don't want a nuclear winner to make our planet some post-apocalyptic nightmare. I love that you're saying all this, and you say the Trump supporters deserve to die. Like, you're like you get to have this, you get to be an arbiter of morality when you're clearly a piece of shit. Like, you're clearly a bad person, and you think you're a good person. Trump supporters are the people who deserve to have their towns annihilated. These people are or who actually deserve to die in a war that'll line up to support. Not my ass, I have a lot to live for. <laughs> the column is almost as bizarre as another item taken down from the Huffington Post by... But let's let's ignore that. Here is uh, Chris Calley's Twitter. Look at this motherfucker's Twitter. Racist bigots bothered by an article that was meant to bother them. Right? Look at this shit. They're trying to tell us you this shit is normal. Don't believe them. Resist. Steve Bannon is a Nazi. People sending uh, hate tweets about an article I wrote months ago, which I stand by if you voted for 45. Soon he'll fuck you over for me. You fucking moron, this article. He's defending his bullshit article that was unethical and shit journalism. Where Trump supporters threaten violence if they lose, I think of this. Keep it classy, Trump voters. Everything this guy's doing. Look at this motherfucker, right? And then get this. 
I kept retweeting his stuff like this. When you write something intentional incendiary and people are, are incended about it. And I made fun of that. And I also made fun of his uh, racist bigots bothered by an article. The motherfucker retweeted at me. This is how fucking triggered this guy was. Look at this shit. This guy is this pissed off. He's claiming, moron bothered he gets criticized for writing nonsense. Oh honey, I ain't bothered. I'm amused. You fuck. Oh my god. Oh darling. Hold on. The fun is just starting. Oh my goodness. Alright. Chris Kelly, fuck you. I am declaring a meme jihad on Chris Kelly. Meme it out, my friends. You have the info. This guy wrote an article that got taken down by his editors where he said Trump supporters need to die. I will put link in the description. Sure, he may have wrote it to be incendiary and mean and stuff, but that just makes it even worse. That makes him no better than the alt-right uh, people that he tries to criticize for using radical tactics in the Trump administrations. He's using any platform he can to be an asshole, be it Huffington Post or on his damn Twitter. Look at this guy. Look at this fucking tool. Oh, resist. Resist what? Resist your, uh, uh, maturity? Resist being intelligent? Resist actually, like, thinking about things? Oh, wow, look at this enlightened writer. Wow, isn't that just the standard of writing there? Two middle fingers in the air, Steve Bannon is a Nazi. God, wow. I mean, this guy really is the voice of a generation. <laughs> oh my god, that article read like a fucking blog post from a, from a girl on Tumblr, some feminist on Tumblr that, that, that's like a freshman in college. This guy gets paid to do this shit. He gets paid to write that kind of garbage. And then everyone calls him out for it, and he's like, when racists and bigots... Racists and bigots, dude, you said that Trump supporters deserve to die. You're not just getting criticized by racists and bigots, you moron. You think Alex Griswold's more uh, a racist and a bigot because he said that, uh, do they have any editorial standards? HuffPo's a shit rag. They're always posting stuff like this. It's propaganda. It's not news. It's not insightful. <laughs> It's not political commentary, it's just trash. You're worse than Fox News or anyone that gets criticized for pushing radical behavior. Holy crap. I can't believe this guy tweeted back. That that was so fucking hilarious. Chris Cali. Yeah, I am declaring a mad meme jihad on you. The Pepes are coming, motherfucker. The Pepes are coming in droves. <laughs> God, this guy. I love this motherfucker. I couldn't believe it. I was just retweeting his shit. They're proud of it. They revel in it. They want to know how much they hate immigrants and blacks and Jews and gays and women and trans people in public bathrooms. Yeah, Chris, you're really not reveling in uh, enjoying your hatred for people. It doesn't come off on your Twitter that you spend all day on your fucking Twitter being an asshole towards people that don't agree with you. Practice what you preach, you dumbass. And I'm going to call you a dumbass. You don't deserve any valid criticism of your moronic article that got taken down. If Huffington Post, if you don't meet their standard... That's how bad you are, my friend. Articles I wrote a month ago that I stand by. Well, you shouldn't stand by it. Uh, you should bend over and take a shit on it. Because the visual representation there would be a better art piece than your writing ability, my friend. Anyway, this is the patriarchy. Like, comment, and subscribe. And Chris Cowley, man, until next time, go fuck yourself, you tool. Oh my god, you tool of tools. Steve Bannon is a Nazi. Chris Cowley is a moron. Let's get that shirt made. Patriarchy's coming after you, my friend. Sorry, you don't get away that easy. <laughs> we have the article, even though they deleted it. We have your Twitter feed, and we have your cuckness to enjoy. I love that he's amused, because I'm even more amused. This is one of the best days I've had in a long time. I had a couple videos that fell through today, but I think this was fate. Anyway, thanks for watching.